All right, so we are going to now move on from assignment seven to our final assignment of the semester. And if you click on assignments, you'll see our art creation and consumption cycle up here. This is our first project that's a full concept project, which means it's the idea that matters. And you're going to use whatever digital art techniques and any traditional art techniques that you want to throw at it to, to communicate your brilliant idea to your audience. And your audience is the class. The class is going to be grading you out of 10 points, just like they did at the midterm, on idea, execution, effort, and pizzazz. So if we scroll down to assignment eight, you're going to see a lot of examples. Some of these are professional examples. Some of these are past student examples. Some of these are examples by my friends, right? All of these are full concept projects for different things, whether it's trying to encourage people to vote, whether it's trying to, to get people to, to be aware of dangers of social media, whether it's trying to get people to behave in certain ways or to value their bodily autonomy or whatever it might be, right? Or to question history. They all have an agenda. And they're all, every decision made in them is based on that idea. So that is what, what is concept-driven work. For this semester and only this semester and only this class, because my morning class is a different theme, your theme for this final project is this, mirror mirrors of you. The way you're going to take that theme is pretend I have a magazine, just like the communication arts magazine that you are looking at right now. And to submit to it, you have to submit something that you think a magazine with the theme Mirror Mirrors of You would be interested in. Because your submission is going to somehow fall under that umbrella. Another way to think about it is if I'm a fine art gallery and I'm doing a group show and I put out an open call, my group show is called Mirror Mirrors of You. It's not fun to say, but it's good to look at, right? And all the submissions are going to come in. You're, you are, have complete creative freedom with how you play with that theme, how you interpret it, how you work within it. This is not the title of your work, right? It's the, the overall theme that the class is responding to. Even if the way you respond to it is to reject it completely. And your title of your piece is something like mirrors are stupid. It would still be reacting to it, right? So I make it a link, not because when I click this link, it gives you the answer, but just to show you some works that might fit within this, right? Because you can never predict. So this is a piece of work by Jason Yun. They're a working professional. They do a lot of work. And this was their piece. The per your perception of the world isn't an objective view of reality. Be mindful of that fact. Everyone exposes the world differently and practice seeing things from a different point of view. So what's interesting is this is the work, right? Let's say that this was given to you on the invite to the show to participate, right? But that doesn't mean your work needs to interpret it any way like this. And what's nice is that Jason Yun gives what is called his brief, what he's trying to do with the work. Your first job is going to be how you interpret this theme. And you're going to write it in a sentence for yourself. So I'll go through this. But quickly, just through the, that's where you're going to find the theme on the assignments page. You'll also see a lot of examples of full concept stuff. And the idea is that you should be able to look at any of these images and kind of know what they're trying to say. Right? And a lot of them are, are cultural critiques. This is a past student example. And now we can get into the assignment, right? So we can go right to the assignment, but that would be a mistake. Because this is where you're going to post your final assignment. And it restates the theme. But this is all part of our final concept unit. So the way we're going to do it is I'm going to try to help you get the best idea to work towards that you can. And we're going to do that through proving ground number four. So if you go to unit modules, 
Now that we're done with digital painting, we're done with unit 14, we go to our full concept project unit, and that's unit 15. The first part of unit 15 is an interim self-assessment. You just answer some questions about your progress in the class so far. That self-awareness will help you be authentic and really get the most out of your portfolio for this final project. And then the last part of this unit, and this is what we're going to try to finish off next class and what you want to start preparing for for next class, is proving ground number four. This is the last requirement to earn your creative problem solving badge. It's called an creating or applying an iterative process. I call this process the con concept project workflow. Uh, Zach or Mr. Fazio calls it creative, right? All those different steps. So the first step is brainstorming, but that's only the first step after you already know what your assignment is. In a project like this, you have to start with step zero, which is you have to give yourself the assignment. You have to define your problem. You know that it fits under the theme of mirror mirrors of you, but the first thing you need to do is define that for yourself. So you're going to write a one sentence statement summary. You can start that today. I have a link to show how this is helpful in all kinds of creative projects, but especially in things like writing. Those of us who are more visual and art based might not take all that much time or have that much confidence in creative writing, but if you write a poem and you take it seriously, you already know what you want the poem to accomplish before you start it, right? You give yourself a brief for it. Same thing with a short story, same thing with a memoir, same thing with an article, same thing with an essay for a class, right? So for art, it's the same thing. Jason Yun's brief is this. Your perception of the world isn't an objective view of reality, but mindful of the fact that everyone experiences the world differently in practice, seeing things from a different point of view. It's not even all that grammatical, right? But he's putting uh, his intentions. And I would like it better if it was just one statement. So it would be like, I want the audience to be mindful of the fact that everyone experiences the world differently <laughs> so that they practice seeing things from a different point of view. That's what their brief is. That's the problem they're trying to solve under this theme. You get to define your own. So why did I choose mere mirrors of you? I want this to be about your own self-awareness a little bit and what you want to create in the world, right? Because your artwork is a reflection of, of your interest, your values, your passions in the outer world. And that's what you're going to be showing to the class. Doesn't mean it needs to be a self-portrait, right? could be however you want to interpret it. So once you try a statement summary, this is a past student example. I will use the familiar imagery of memes and cancel culture to satirize our society's need to politicize every bleeping thing, no matter how obvious or important. What I like about that one is that they were sure to include right away the things they were most interested in in that moment. So they're interested in memes and the idea of cancel culture and the idea of satire, satire, you know, having humor. And was their prompt mirror mirrors of you? No, they had a totally different prompt. But that's what's amazing about these kind of themes and these prompts. This is just holding a mirror up to the culture as this student sees it. So try to include the things you care about. Right? And then it also shows with his expletives and with the, the exclamation mark that this is something they care about, right? So try to make your problem something you care about, something you want to find a, a good solution for. That's going to make your portfolio piece better. The next step, and this can be really rough, but I want you to, to write something. The next step is to acknowledge the cliches that come to you. What imagery kind of communicates that, that problem? And you're going to sketch three different solutions to that problem very loosely, you don't even need to use outside reference at this stage. So what if for mere mirrors of you, I can't get the image out of my head of a disco ball, right? Like mirror ball, that kind of thing. And so I think, okay, I want to do something with the disco ball. So I put that in my, in my statement summary. I will use a disco ball to show that reality is a multi 
angled perception of a subjective truth. I don't know. I'll get wordy and interesting, right? But I know I want the disco ball in there somewhere, right? And that might be a, a statement summary that I revise later when you meet with me next class, but that's going to get me to the next stage. So I have to come up with three different ways to make the disco ball engaging and interesting. And so maybe one way is I show a disco ball that's shattered. And if I don't want to draw that, I just draw a circle with lots of squiggles and I write underneath it, a disco ball shattered. You can do this by hand, you can draw this digitally, but I need three sketches from each of you and a statement summary by the beginning of next class. And that will be the first step of proving ground four. You're ready for your first critique. So how did this student approach it? They took this idea of cancel culture and memes. They were also in my art history class. So they first did a little sketch, like changing an art historical piece uh, of Eugene Delacroix's liberty, leading the people, changing it into like a contemporary meme, right? And wanted to have Lady Liberty, liberty stepping over dead bodies with a sign that says no masks, right? And then in this one, they wanted to play with the the kind of very early memes of I can has cheeseburger, throw an internet cat in there, uh, holding up a shredded face mask, right? And then the last one was something called the butterfly meme that was popular when the student was doing this project and trying to apply the same lens to that. So they knew from the very beginning they wanted to do their own version of a meme, right? to comment on meme culture and to do something about people being canceled. And because this was in the middle of COVID, a main way was like critiques about masks and about how to, to best exist during the pandemic. So then I met with them. And the first criteria of the rubric for this proving ground is that you create at least three rough thumbnail sketches and participate in an individual critique with the instructor. It doesn't say your sketches need to be good, but they need to be three sketches that are three different solutions to the problem that you give yourself. Make sense? So not, if I decide I like the shattered disco ball idea best, I'm not gonna draw that three times from three different angles. That's not this part. That can only be one of your visual approaches. And then you have to come up with three others. Maybe I do a disco ball dipped in yogurt with a stick put into it. And then maybe I do a disco ball uh, in the middle of a fire pit on it with barbecue. Yeah. Are you thinking that I'm not going to do it? No. No. I am going to work with you and critique to help you see the strengths. The one you will do is going to come from these next steps, which is basically, it's going to be probably a combination of some of the things from your multiple sketches, all put into one approach that's really strong. So you're gonna pick your favorite, but then we're gonna find ways to make it stronger. And if you wanna see how the steps work, the next step is to collect info and references to support your idea. So they identified this is the one they're most interested in, and then we talked about all the ways it could be strengthened, and then they found ways and then created a refined sketch. And then they're ready for their second critique, which we'll do on Wednesday. So we'll do both critiques in class Wednesday. If you're not here Wednesday, we need to do those critiques over Zoom if you want to be able to meet this proving ground. We need to get that all done before Monday's class because Monday's class, you need to be done with the proving ground and working on your final project. We'll have sketch ready by next class. By Wednesday, beginning of class. Perfect. And in order to have sketches, you need to know what you're trying to do. So also your statement summary. All right, that's it.